One of the major new features of the Onsong 2023 update is multi-tracks. Now Onsong has always supported backing tracks, which lets you play music for the song you're looking at. But a backing track is just stereo and you can't make any changes to it. Multi-tracks include multiple channels or stem files, each with a different instrument, which means you can change the mix to suit your needs for the performance. For instance, let's say you're missing a drummer and a bass player. You could turn the drums and the bass on and mute the guitar and the piano tracks that you might be playing. Let's take a look at multi-tracks in Onsong. Here we have Onsong 2023. If I open up the utilities menu, I can tap on editors and view my audio media library. Here's where I can import backing tracks into Onsong. Let's add a multi-track by hitting the plus button down at the bottom. Here you can see we have our usual options, but in addition, we have multi-tracks for worship and praise charts. I'm gonna tap on multi-tracks for worship. And now I can browse this website to find my account. For instance, I'm gonna hit my orders. Here are multi-tracks that I've already purchased on the website. I'm gonna scroll down and find one and tap download. Now this particular website, I have to then choose what I want to download. Multi-tracks typically are distributed as zip files, so I'm gonna download the zip file. Onsong detects that it's a zip file that contains a multi-track and starts downloading it. Now a multi-track, as you can see, can be much larger than a regular backing track. That's because it can contain more than one track and they're usually uncompressed audio, in this case, WAV files. Usually backing tracks would be compressed audio, like an MP3 or an M4A. So if you are going to use multi-tracks, make sure you have plenty of space on your iPad. It's not uncommon for a multi-track to take up a gigabyte or more in space, depending on how many stem files are contained inside of it. And remember, every stem file gives you more control over the music. Once the multi-track is downloaded, Onsong will process the multi-track. There, now I have a multi-track that I can play back. To do that, I'm just gonna tap on the play button here on the thumbnail. And you start to hear the music playback. So what's the difference between a multi-track and a regular track? Well, I'm going to tap and hold on the track, which will reveal the new context menu for the audio media library. In here, I'm gonna tap on mix. Now we get a mixer where we can see each of the individual tracks that have been recorded. For instance, I have a click track, which gives me a metronome. I have a guide track, which tells me whether there's a verse or a chorus coming up. We have drums, percussion, bass, multiple electric guitars, acoustic guitar, piano, organ, keys, strings, synth, and a lead vocal. So when we play this, you can expect to hear some music. I can then scrub the different parts like I would expect for a backing track. But let's say I already have a drummer. Well, I can come down here and tap on the mute button. Now the drums will come out of the mix. And if I already have acoustic, or let's say piano, and I'm gonna sing along, I'll mute those as well. So just like that, I've customized my mix. I can also change the volume of certain things. So let's say I don't want a lot of organ, I can change the volume there. All right. So now what? How do I add this to a song? Well, it's done just like you would a regular backing track. I could tap the play button in the live bar down here to open up my choose track screen and then tap choose custom track. Just like picking a regular backing track, I'd go into my Onsong media library and pick the song. Onsong's gonna prompt me to match the key of the backing track and the song that I'm currently looking at. The song I'm in is the Welcome to Onsong song, which is obviously written in C, but the backing track was originally recorded in B. Onsong is going to recommend that we change the key of the song that's viewed on the screen to the key of B and to have the same tempo as the backing track. So I'm going to tap that. Now my song is transposed, so when I play my backing track, everything's in order. As you can see, playing a multi-track in Onsong is really simple. It's a one button operation, and we intended it to be that way. But let's say you want to make some changes. If I tap and hold on the play button, I can see my track, 
and there's a now a slider icon in the upper left corner. That lets me open up the new multi-track widget. I could take that widget, put it in various places on my screen, change its size and shape. You may also notice that when I play the multi-track, there's no click. That's because we want it to be ready to play out of the box just like any other backing track. But we can change those settings. Let me tap on the widget and then tap on the settings gear icon down here. Now you can see I can turn my click on or I can set the click in the left channel or the right channel. Let's say I have my iPad connected to my PA system and I have the left channel coming out of my iPad set to only go through my in-ears. So only I and my musicians will hear it. The music will then come out the right channel. That will go to both my in-ears and to the house. Now when I play the track, One, we should hear a click. Two, we'll also hear one, the guide, two, which is somebody, three, usually a computer, telling you if a verse or a chorus is coming up in the mix. I can always go into those settings while it's even playing and change the way it sounds. I can also turn off the music if I just want the click and the guide. That might be useful for practicing. Some other settings I can change are the prominence of the artwork or the opacity of the widget. Multitracks for Worship is just one of the built-in providers of multitracks inside of Onsong, which makes it easy to start using multitracks. You can also import from praise charts. But remember, multitracks are just zip files that contain audio information. So you can import files that you might have purchased from Loop Community or multitracks.com as well. You can also make your own. We have a video to show you how to do that seen below. Let me import a zip file to show you how easy it is. Again, I'm gonna go into Utilities, tap on Editors, Audio Media Library, and tap the plus button. Now we can go into Dropbox, scroll down to my audio files, go to my multi-tracks, and just pick a track. Now this is a pretty small multi-track at about 289 megabytes, so we'll give it a little bit of time to download. Once it's downloaded, OnSong will process the file and then tell us how long it is, show us the key, and the BPM. Now one thing you might notice is that multi-tracks take up a lot of space. Down below, we show that we have two backing tracks consuming 1.5 gigabytes with a managed storage link. OnSong has developed a way to manage your file storage when you're dealing with multi-tracks, and we do that a number of ways. One, we can condense those tracks so they're smaller if you're not using them. And we can re-download those tracks from those providers if you need them again. Let's take a look at how we can manage our storage. I'm gonna tap on the Manage Storage button, and now you can see I can condense my media. Condensed media allows those files to be reduced and shrunken in size. We do that by taking all those uncompressed audio files and compressing them into M4A files. That means that a one gigabyte file could be as small as 100 megabytes, which is much more palatable. I can also choose some other options as well. For instance, I can reduce and delete the file optionally or I can just delete the file, and that will only happen if there's a way to download that file again. The default option is Onsong will make those files smaller and then re-download them again if they're available, and if not, simply re-expand those files when needed. We can also choose to automatically condense our multi-tracks. For instance, if we don't use a multi-track in a couple of weeks, we can automatically shrink that down in size. And then if we do want to play it again, it'll automatically expand for us. We can also choose what gets stored in our backup files. By default, Onsong does not back up multi-tracks, but it backs up everything else. We can now tap here to choose what files are backed up. So if we wanted to back up our multi-tracks, we could do that, but just keep in mind that that backup file can be quite large. And down below you can see that we have an estimate as to what the current size is and how small we can make it. 
Let me tap on Condensed Media Library now. OnSong is compressing all that wave information, 1.5 gigabytes in size, and making it much smaller. As you can see, it could take a little bit of time. There. Now our library has been compressed and takes up a lot less space. So what happens if we have a condensed multi-track when we go to play it? Well, OnSong will simply expand it so it can be played. Let's take a look. Here we have it from the inside out again, and I'm going to hit the play button. Now after a brief delay, it'll start playing. Now remember when we linked that multi-track to the core chart, how it OnSong prompted us to match the key of the backing track? The reason for that is, if we transpose the song, it will also transpose the multi-track. Let's take a look. I'm going to come here to my Style Preferences menu and transpose to a different key. Let's go to the key of A. Now you can see that my song is in the key of A, but also my backing track, my multi-track, has also transposed into the key of A as well. I can even do that on the fly. If I transpose the song too far, OnSong is going to tell me that the audio quality could suffer. And I should probably just use that for practice and not live performance. I'm going to tap on Transpose Audio anyway. Now OnSong transpose the song into the key of D. And of course, I can always go back to the key of B, which is highlighted as the default key. I can also change the tempo of the song. So if I tap and hold my metronome down here and change it to something else, like 101, my multi-track should then also be updated and play at a faster BPM. I can also tap on this icon in the widget to change both these parameters as well. So I can go back to that 74 BPM, which is bolded, and I can change the key here as well and you can see that the underlying song is transposed. As you can see, multi-tracks in OnSong is really powerful. It gives you control over your mix, and it lets you take that click and the cue and put that into your ears so you can play along. You can also transpose and shift the tempo of those multi-tracks. You can make your own or import them from many different sources. And all of this with the ease of use of one button to play that multi-track in OnSong.